What I want to do in this video is have a look at an introduction to the concept of Stalinism, uh, the Stalinist dictatorship, and the growth of terror within the Soviet Union. What we're going to do is we're going to explain some of the basic key concepts that existed in the Stalinist regime during this period, and then look at a couple of examples of 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 where the Stalinist regime, you know, really um, really showed itself in the most public light, especially when it comes to things like the existence of show trials between 1936 and 1938. So. It should be understood pretty um, conclusively by now, hopefully through um, the uh, videos on society and economics, that the Stalinist government was totalitarian. So we would describe Stalin as a dictator, and we would describe the Stalinist regime as a dictatorship. Dictatorship. And this is really a way of explaining um, Stalinism as a, 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 as a government-controlled, um, heavy economic control, um, a lot of implementation of widespread political terror, uh, more on this later, so uh, more on this in a minute, oopsie daisy, more on this later, as well as media control and the use of propaganda, so, you know, effectively zero democracy, there was no kind of um, democratic incentives to do anything, there was there was nothing at all, it was a, a, a totalitarian dictatorship. And we can see how this um, operated by looking at first the concept of state terror, uh, then the role of the NKVD, the police and secret police, the sto uh, socialist secret police, and then we'll look at a couple of key examples. So really despite the fact that Stalin was effectively an undisputed um, leader of the Communist Party by around 1928. Um, we will look at we will look at the extent to which this was the case in a minute. But despite the fact that, generally speaking, that Stalin was the leader of the Communist Party around 1928, he was an incredibly paranoid human being. He was concerned about challenges um, to his rule from other members of the party, and so as a result, Stalin launched a series of terror campaigns and this was emphasized through the use of arrests the use of torture and the use of mass imprisonment all of these things contributed to these mass terror campaigns between uh, 1935 and 1938 we see the, um, the 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 peak of these terror campaigns and we will talk about them in a later lesson effectively the terrors in the stalinist regime were responsible for the around the the deaths of around 10 million people. Of course, the estimates vary, just like with any um, kind of uh, mass killings, any kind of genocide, any kind of crime against humanity. Uh, the the number of deaths is always going to be disputed, but around 10 million people um, Stalin was responsible for the death of. And Stalin implemented um, this mass terror using the NKVD. The NKVD was the secret police Okay, and effectively, what the NKVD NKVD did was enforce purges both within the Communist Party itself, so um, both internally, internally, but also externally through wider Soviet society. So also externally. So anybody that had any kind of um, criticism of the Stalinist regime, anyone that could be conceived as a threat to the Stalinist regime, was considered an enemy of the Stalinist regime, and so was dealt with by the NKVD um, um, swiftly. And we can f see this uh, with a very good example um, looking at Sergei Kirov. So Kirov presented um, what would be described as a major threat to the Stalin's regime. Um, in, in terms of um, within the internal party democracy of the communist um, of the communist party, in 1932, for example, um, it was shown uh, Chiron uh, showed his criticism of um, Stalin by um, defending somebody called uh, Runtin, who himself published a document which was highly critical of Stalin and um, general uh, generally the Stalin policies. So generally Stalin's policies. Stalinist policies. And 
further criticism of Stalinist policies came in 1933 from Kairov, where him and a number of moderates um, began to argue for more realistic targets in the second five-year plan. So we know... Uh, we know for a fact when we looked at the five-year plans um, in a previous lesson that Stalin was relatively uh, well. It went from either being you know relatively unrealistic to incredibly unrealistic in the targets that were set out, and so Kairov and a number of moderates argued for and called for more realistic targets. So we can see here that we have um, somebody who would have challenged and presents a challenge to the Stalinist regime. This was made worse when in 1934, during the 17th Party Congress, the Communist Party Congress, um, Stalin's position um, seemed to be in some kind of genuine threat when he came second to Kairov in a vote when it came to the electing of a new committee. So there was a, you know, a vote within the party when it comes to the election of a new central committee, um, and Kairov won uh, and Stalin came second, and he won around 200 more votes than um, than Stalin. So uh, Kairov, I believe, uh, won around 927. Sorry, uh, Kairov won around 1,000, um, uh, 1,200 ish, and then um, Stalin won around 927. So Kairov came first, and as a result, on the 1st of December 1934, Kairov was shot. And this uh, solidified Stalin's authority once again in the party. Now, obviously, Stalin would have denied this, um, initially denied this anyway, uh, because there was, um, you know, suspicion, obviously, on Stalin, because um, Kairov presented probably the most major threat to Stalin's um, position as leader of the Communist Party. And he was shot, um, you know, the same year as the 17th Party Congress, where Kairov presented a genuine threat to Stalin's regime. Another example of the terror um, being shown uh, in a public light, in a very public light, was the um, show trials. There are three show trials that took place between 1936 and 1938. Now, when we say show trials, this is because um, the, the concept of a trial implies some kind of justice uh, you know some kind of fairness and, and equity or, and, and justice uh, there was no justice here so no justice that's why we use the concept of a show trial it's a trial to 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 show off and uh, give a perception of some kind of um, fairness and justice when in reality there was none the first uh, trial was the trial of the 16 and it took place in 1936 and it led to the execution of former um, uh, former rivals of Stalin if you remember Zinoviev and Kamenev and it also um, and also a number of um, their supporters so these are former communist um, people former communist frontrunners actually in fact that um, could have been seen as um, possible replacements of Lenin when Lenin died so if you uh, need any um, kind of refresher on that we have a lesson on that um, about the struggle for power within the communist party following the death of Lenin and these two um, definitely were um, in the running or at least you know in and around the background the second show trial took place in 1937 and it was the trial of the 17 and it led to the execution of you guessed it 17 uh, and these were Trotsky supporters supporters of Trotsky or at least uh, either supporters or former supporters so or former supporters or former supporters okay the final show trial took place in 1938, and this was the trial of the 21, and it led to the execution of another um, um, key, um, quite high-ranking official within the Communist Party, and this was Bukharin and uh, a number of close supporters. So we have here um, what would be easily described as Stalin's elimination of rivals. So Stalin was uh, eliminating eliminating rivals in this setting here so in the next series of lessons we're going to go into a little bit more detail and look at specific examples of of, of terror and dictatorship um, within within the stalinist regime specifically focusing on things like the great terror and um, just before that uh, sorry and then after that we will then look at uh, the soviet uh, 
regime um, during and following the Second World War.